Now, I love goals. I love having a goal to work towards. And I love watching my clients smash their goals. So Vicky, one of my amazing mastermind clients, she set a goal for, she, she still has a full-time job. She set a goal. She wanted 10 clients a week by September. She hit that middle of August, which was incredible. Amy, another mastermind client, August was her best month ever. And I said to her, where were you? Like, what's the kind of growth in a year? And I think she worked out it was just under 3,000% increase from where she was 12 months ago, which is incredible. And I just love watching people smash their goals. So yeah, where are you guys with goal setting? Are you goal setters or not? I'm not seeing anyone. So I'm assuming that we're not doing a lot of goal setting. Um, now, Lisa, well, yes, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Girls are so, so important. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about my own recent goal experience because although I love goals, I just suddenly felt like I wasn't like, wasn't feeling my goal really. I think for want of a better word, I felt just totally off, just, oh. And then I realized that actually me and goals We've got a bit of an unhealthy relationship. I have a bit of a pattern and I've been doing this for years, but it's only like in the last week that I realized that this is something I did. I set a goal, you know, and it could, it's not just business. It could be, right, I'm going to get this horse at this level by this time, or it could be fitness, anything. But I love to set like a stretching goal. So I set a big goal, big punchy goal and get to a certain point and I'll be like, Mm, this isn't quite happening. And I sort of talk myself out of it slightly. So for example, maybe I realize that, I don't know, we're halfway through the year and we're not, I'm not halfway to the goal. Or I maybe I set this goal, I wanted this horse to get to this particular level and I'm like, oh, the season's only finishing or wherever. But I get to a point and I'm just like, I don't feel I'm that way, I'm, I'm that making that much progress to my goal. So then what I've done many, many times is I sort of talk myself out of it. And I could give myself like a million justifications. And then I'm like, no, it's fine. I'll downgrade my goal, still like a good goal. I can go towards that. And I've, you know, a thousand reasons why my new goal is the right goal. But actually, if I'm honest, deep down, I feel really frustrated. I feel really pissed off with myself. I feel cross. And I feel, I feel like I've let myself down. And this then puts me into a real state of lack, which is, of course, the worst possible way you want to be operating in life or business in any capacity. And it's, it's a pattern I didn't realize I've been doing. But actually, if I'm going to be brutally honest, and I love to be as transparent as possible with everybody, I've been doing that for years. But I just only recently realized. So if you feel off with your goals, like honestly, do not worry, because this is why I wanted to just share like my learnings on this. So you can enhance your goal setting and your goal getting. Because I was talking on the last retreat about how to set goals. And I'll mention this a, a bit again. So don't worry if you, that's not fresh in your mind. And this is really important, but there's, there's been a chunk that I didn't realize I was missing, which I can't wait to tell you about. So just like a little back step on how goals, not so much how goals work, how your mind works and how the two kind of parts of goals work. So it's your conscious mind that will decide and set the goal. You know, you'll like rationally think, right, I want X clients. I want to earn Y a month, whatever it is. But the goal getting bit of you that actually takes the action, picks up the phone, calls people, gets chatting to vets, finishes your website, Mary, for example, that bit is uh, your subconscious mind. And that is the bit of your brain which is controlling up to 97% of your actions. So what can happen is you set a goal, like you're consciously, yeah, I really wanna have this goal, but if you don't do the mindset work, which I'm always banging on about because this is what makes the changes and the shifts, you probably won't get there. Let me give you an example. So if you said, 
Like I want to have a £3,000 month. So you're like, yep. And you're thinking, right, I can do this and this and maybe broken it down. And like, how are we going to make it work? And you can feel really positive about it. So the conscious part of your brain is like, yes, it's brilliant. But that is not running the show. It's your subconscious. And then see, this is all good on this side, but you have some beliefs that are holding you back. Like you believe you don't have enough time. You believe there aren't enough clients. Maybe you believe you aren't quite good enough as a therapist. You believe the market's too crowded, whatever. You can see how you then don't take those steps. And if you've ever thought, oh God, like why didn't I? Oh God, I was meant to call that vet today. Why didn't I do that? You're not lazy. You're not useless. You have some blocks. This is holding you back. And this is why working on the deeper mindset stuff is so, so important. So I wanted to just let you know how you need both parts of your brain on board to make goals work. Because it's no good just, you know, thinking, yeah, 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 this is a great goal, you know, rationally and with your conscious mind and then just thinking happy thoughts. It's, it's not enough. You have to get rid of those negative beliefs that are holding you back. So you do need to set goals correctly. You know, I was talking about this on the, on the last retreat, all that sort of smart stuff you've probably heard before. Goals do need to be specific and measurable and time bound. And you need to feel like you can achieve it to an extent as well. But you, to me, it goes a lot further than that. It really does. You need to uncover the potential blocks and work on those. And I think you need to feel like your goal is doable to an extent. I really think that is important. So like Vicky, the example I gave you of one of my clients, she wanted 10 clients. She was doing all the steps to get these 10 clients. And she, we, we actually worked together to make sure she could see how she would fit these 10 clients in. because. When she first joined the mastermind, I knew this was her goal, but she was like, oh, but I'm really busy. And we're like, right, okay, we've got to work on that belief because subconsciously you could be really holding yourself back because if you're telling yourself on the one hand, yeah, 10 clients, 10 clients. On the other hand, so busy and got enough time. You can see how you won't be getting those 10 clients if you don't believe it is possible or doable for you. So I think that is, I love goals to be stretched stretchy a stretching goal but I think it is really important to feel like you can see a sort of way to to make it happen now it is perfectly possible to set a goal and have no idea how you are going to make it happen and just hold on to that vision of what you want to create and I don't know if you have heard of a lady called Amanda Francis she is a money mindset expert go and follow her on instagram she's quite sweary so if you don't like liberal use of the f word she may not be for you but she does swear a lot but she does say some really cool things some really useful things and she's a great example of somebody who sets goals no idea how she's necessarily going to achieve them holds on to that vision of what she wants and and gets it done um but what what is possible for her how she can make that happen is she has loads of different ways that people can work with her. So I think she's a great example of not always having to know the how, because that can really block you with goals. If you feel like you've got to kind of have every detail panned down, you can again be really blocking yourself from making your goal come to life. Now, I think this is where the vision comes in. For me, how I like to operate is I need to, I don't need to know exactly the details of how my goal is going to come to life, but I like to, I, at the, where I am at the moment, I find it's helpful to have a sort of a rough idea of how I can see it coming to life. With the, with the bigger vision, I don't need the detail. I just hold on to that image, that picture, the feelings of what I want to create. I suppose like um, it's my wedding anniversary on Sunday, which reminds me, I have to get my husband a present, but um, reminds me of how 12 years ago before I met my husband I knew exactly how I wanted my life to look in the future there was this amazing husband there were some small children there were some ponies I I did not have a clue how it was going to happen but I just knew that that's what I wanted my life to look like in the future um 
and then I did meet Mr. Amazing. <clears throat> and you just, you know, I met him in my husband in Greece. He would never have thought that's necessarily how it was going to pan out. And that's what I mean. It's not about having every detail. It's that bigger vision. Okay, so goals, you need to make sure both parts of your brain are on board and you need this big vision. This is why this is part of your pre-work. The name of the sweary lady is Amanda Francis. Follow her on Instagram. She has a great book as well. She's, she's fab. She has some good stuff on YouTube, some free meditations. But if you don't like F word or you've got some more children around, <laughs> use headphones. Yeah, she she's F slots, but she does talk lots of sense. And I have to say it took me, it took my ears a little while to adjust to her for sure. Okay, biggest problem with goals. So as well as not having both sides of your brain on board, this is my biggest takeaway and learning of, of the last week or so. It's, have you actually set the right goal? Now, there's two ways you could set a goal. Have you set a goal because it's what you think you should do? You set a goal because you think it will like make you look or feel better or you think it will put you on some kind of pedestal or you think it's where you should be with your business or your fitness or your horse or whatever goals you like to set you know across whatever areas of your life you like to set goals because I think that's very easy to do that particularly in business you know you you should think you, you might well think well I should be working towards x amount a month but is it really a goal that is like from your heart so this this is my massive takeaway that I, as I said, just after a, quite a challenging session with my own business coach, challenging in all the good ways, but really made me think. And so I wanted to share this with you guys today. It's so easy for your goals to be set for your ego, not from your heart. So what I want you to do is think about your vision. And I want you to think like, what goal have you set for your business? If you haven't set a goal, we'll set one. You know, what seems like a logical step? And then ask yourself these questions. Does your goal set your heart on fire? Like, does it like really fill you with passion and energy and light and make you feel amazing? Does it excite you? And do you feel inspired and motivated? And you can think all the, th all the good things about your goal, but if you don't feel like those things, it's not quite right. I would say if you're getting no's to those questions, there's a strong chance that that's like an ego-driven goal rather than a goal from your heart. So my goal for this year, I had a punchy financial goal. And I one of the things I felt really excited about was that on hitting this goal, I had a big donation in planned for Red Wings, who I you know, love working with Red Wings. So I felt like I'd set a goal, which I was talking about in the, in the July retreat, that wasn't just good for me. Like, you know, it was, it was good for lots of people, lots of horses. But then just recently, I just, it just wasn't like lighting me up this goal at all. And this is when I realized I have this pattern. And when I was talking to my business coach about this, um, as I said, bit of tough love required. She was quite quick to point out that this was this financial goal was a real ego driven goal. I knew it was a stretch. So like I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to prove something that like feeling of kind of needed to keep up. I mean, there were like lots of reasons that she felt that this was an ego goal. And she was spot on the money. She really was bang on. Um, even though I was like, oh yeah, you are so right. So a bit of tough love, which is so often required, but so grateful to you. I really was because I came away from that call, like thinking, ah, I initially felt a bit like a drift and I was like, oh my God, oh, wow, I've got it wrong. What am I going to do? And then I had a bit of thinking time and isn't writing just a little potter down the lane or something so good for thinking I realized that actually what felt like a heart-centered goal, what felt like it would really light up like my heart and my soul was helping a certain number of people rather than having a financial goal. Like 
I drilled down into really what makes me just feel epic and it's helping people and it's helping horses. So I've changed my goal to help a certain number of people across both sides of the business, the sort of different goals of different sides. And I feel so excited. I feel like it's doable. It's just, it's a, like a degree of a stretch, but it feels doable. I feel like I have the capacity, the energy, and I just feel privileged to be able to help these people. I feel like I've, I've got like the space for them, if that makes sense, mentally. Ironically, it will probably have very similar financial effects, but I just don't feel like the pressure. My goal was just starting to feel like a kind of heavy weight. And it just, just didn't feel good at all. And, and now, as I said, I feel just really free. I feel so excited, so motivated to just, I mean, I want to help as many people as possible. And now I have a goal for how many people I want to welcome into my coaching programs. It's incredible. It really is. I just feel like I can help these people. And that's fantastic. So I want your goals to be like that. And that is the point of me telling you the story. I want you to just feel like, oh, that freedom, that excitement, that buzz about your goals. So tell me some goals that you guys are working towards. I would love to know, like Mary, you hit your website goal, which is fantastic. And Mary, you should put a link in the chat to your website because Mary's website looks awesome. In fact, definitely put a, a link in there. I'm sure everybody would love to see it and it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, Mary has worked really hard on her website. It looks absolutely fab. And yeah, so Mary, what are you working towards next? That would be really cool to hear. Carrie, I think when we spoke before, I think you're in the wanting to, I think you're still working, aren't you? wanting to make the side hustle full-time jobs so that'd be really interesting to hear what your goals are hannah i saw you just post in the group before i jumped onto the call that you've recently set up in business so tell me some like what are your goals is it a client goal you've got hannah is it a financial goal i'd love to hear the details crystal i saw you'd posted about wanting to offer some more kind of rehab or work over the winter so that you felt people even if they weren't riding were still kind of looking after their horses how does that actually look? Increasing client base. Yeah, brilliant. So make that a bit more specific. And how does it feel? Does it feel like it's coming from your heart, those, those goals? That's what I'd really want you to kind of sit and reflect on, Hannah, in the next couple of weeks. And what is that big picture? So can, like, just get into the space of how being a physio as your full-time job is, is going to look like. Does it can you see yourself, you know, I don't know, have you got like one location, people come to you, are you traveling around from yard to yard, do you ride your horses first, do you do certain time in your office and then go treating like, you really want to get that vision, you really, really do. Um, yes, that's so exciting, wanting to leave your current job, Mary, that's incredible, that's amazing, that's a great, great goal. And again, I imagine that is a very heart-centered goal because I think financial goals can feel a bit more ego-driven, but wanting to leave your job, oh my goodness, I can so relate to that. I think I've shared before how four years ago, yes, it was four years ago, um, I, I had previously absolutely loved my job and then I didn't love it and I just wanted to leave. I didn't have a business at that exact point I had just decided to run this one course as like a distraction one horse a day course and it was just past my four-year anniversary actually I didn't realize at the time I was setting up a business as such and I wanted to just run this one course because I thought it'd be really fun and then it turned into more than one course and, and here we are now four years later but I can totally relate to that feeling of wanting to get out of your job I really really can it was oh it's just a hard space so I think when it comes from your heart it really really matters and it's just getting both sides of your brain on on board and this is where people can get slightly stuck when they're trying to transition from like a full-time job to making their business full-time because there is a real there is a sticky point I'm not going to lie where one's nearly full-time 
and one is technically full time, like the job. And that's a lot to fit in. But you've just got to be telling yourself that you can do it. You've just got to be making that mental space and seeing a way forward, because otherwise you can get really stuck and burnt out at that sort of the business is maybe like two thirds, half. It's it's so close, but it's not quite enough to leave your job. Uh, and that's where I can see people getting really stuck because then they start telling themselves, oh, I can't do it. Like it's too much. I can't manage this getting kind of nudging towards burnout. So just make sure for those of you that are in that tricky transition phase that you have really created the space. I am a big believer in booking in your new clients before you have the clients. Now that might sound really crazy, but you can just make up any name, name of the horse and block them into your diary. You know, when would you, so what actually would you do? Like if you, or someone that tells themselves they're really busy and then you've suddenly got five new clients that's when people get in a panic whereas if you've got used to seeing the space in your diary of when those five new clients can be fitted in you can see and this has worked so well for Vicky you can see how it can happen and then it just gets both sides of your brain totally on board and working 